Mark Duffner, who led the Holy Cross football program to national prominence in the 80s, back on campus today for a special dedication. Duffner's record at Holy Cross, an incredible 60 wins, five losses, and one tie. Coach Duffner on hand with his wife, Kathy, as his players helped dedicate Holy Cross's head football coach's office in Duffner's name. The legendary coach heaped all the praise and the credit for his success on his staff, players, and the school. It's embarrassing to me because really it's all their names are the names that should be on this, not me. It's, it's, it's because of their efforts, because of their care for one another that uh, things were accomplished as they were. And many, many people, as I said, across this campus were a part of the team we had. So it's a collective award, I guess you'd say, for so many people that were very special here. I spent 11 of my 44 years coaching here, and it was a time that was magical and a time that uh, just had a phenomenal impact on myself and my family. Just an incredible record. As we mentioned, two undefeated seasons, a record of 65 wins, uh, five losses and one tie, 60 wins. Father Earl Markey in there, blessing the room. Outstanding. Well-deserved, too. Mark Duffner, what a great run he had with the Holy Cross football program in the 80s. Now to the present-day Holy Cross football program. Nick McBeth had a great career at Holy Cross as a linebacker. Now, coming out of high school, he wasn't heavily recruited, but it never stopped him from pursuing his childhood goal. I mean, it's, it's, it's been a goal since I was, like, third grade, and then, I mean, not being recruited as heavily as kind of the, some of the top guys, so you kind of get to the back of your mind, like, damn, maybe, maybe they don't want me to make it, all this stuff, and then you start putting up the numbers at your school and start getting recognition. It makes you feel good and think about this is really a possibility. Well, Nick McBeth's dream may come true this weekend. He may get drafted by the NFL. If not, he may get signed, certainly as a free agent after that. I know the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, there was a lot of talk that they liked him at Holy Cross's Pro Day. Well, the NFL draft continuing tonight and tomorrow. Former Doherty High School and Boston College standout Isaac Yitam is watching at home with his family. He always watches the draft. He loves it. But this year has a different feel as he's expecting to hear his name called. Yeah, I usually watch every year. I enjoy watching NFL drafts, so I'm going to watch with my family back in Worcester. So, you know, he's going to watch every day and just wait till that time comes. But I enjoy it, so I'm going to watch it. I'm thankful that I graduated last December, so now it's just like I can focus on what's important. You know, I'm thankful to got my degree, so now it's just like everything's all football, and it's just I wake up, train, take care of my body, and do the same thing over and over. All right, so rounds two and three tonight, and then tomorrow they will finish up the NFL draft. Best of luck to Isaac Yitam, great player and a great guy as well. Grafton's Dave Steinmetz was a graduate student transfer to Purdue after a successful career at URI. It's an idea he got from former teammate Tyler Catalina, now an NFL guy helping Steinmetz prepare for the NFL draft weekend and beyond. And then I watched him do it. Um, we were actually living it together at the time when he was transferring, and you know, watch the whole process go on and, um, you know, it worked out for him and um, it's working out for me now. So, yeah, we stay in touch. He actually works out here too. Um, but, no, he just says, you know, stay calm. You know, don't get too stressed out, stuff like that. And, um, you know, just be, be reachable. You know, you're going to be answering the phone a lot. So. Steinmetz is so fluid and so athletic. He's 6'8", 320 pounds, running and jumping like that. He figures to be a late-round draft pick or a preferred free agent signee. Burncoat, Maine South, boys volleyball tonight. 5-2 Burncoat in the first set. Maine South serving, Burncoat's Johan Muhana setting for Danny Rivera. And Man Fon with the block. Maine South's John Tran returning serve. Burncoat's Rivera sets for Ryan Munez. He gets the spike, 8-4 Patriots in front. Munez the serve. John Tran setting Christopher Doe. And it's blocked by Muhana and Jordy Kajo. 11-6, Burncoat in front. Doe serving, Kajo with the dig. Man Fon with the spike. It's a 17-9 game now, Burncoat in front. Munez the serve, Doe the bump to John Tran. Fon's spike is denied by Kajo, 24-14 Patriots, and now it's set point. Munez with the ace, Burncoat wins the first set, 25-14. 8-3 burn coat in the second set. Michael Vargas to serve. Muhana setting Zavoin Humphrey for Maine South. Oh, no, four burn coat. Maine South unable to return. Maine South's John Tran with the ace. It's a 15-10 burn coat lead at this point. 
Burncoats. Kevin Gomez with the serve. Kajo, the tip for set point. It's 24-14 Patriots. Volley in progress. Muhana with the dig. Rivera setting Humphrey up for the spike. He elevates. He gets the point. Burncoat gets the win. They take the second set, and they win the match. Three games to none, and that will do it for sports. That's going to do it for us here on Worcester News tonight. For Kevin Shea, I'm Anna Botari. Have a great weekend.